Hey there YouTube, I have a Bible tour video for you all today. This is just a bonus video this week. If you're new to my channel, hey, I'm Anna, and I host a Bible reading plan here on YouTube and over on my Patreon page, but primarily here on YouTube. And I am going to show you all my notes in the margins of my Bible, my highlighting, etc., etc., in the Gospel of Mark, because that is the book we just finished up reading. Um, this past few weeks. And so I will turn the camera around, show you that. And yeah, let's get into it. I'll flip the camera around. All right, so as you can see, this is the Gospel of Mark in my Bible. And um, I'll show you, this is what my calendar over on my Etsy shop looks like for the Bible reading plan. Um, so at the end of February, if it'll focus here, it's not wanting to focus for some reason, but we wrapped up on February 24th, we wrapped up Mark 16, and now we're already into Luke. I'm a couple days ahead, obviously, because I'm hosting the plan. And I just have these calendars over on my Etsy shop. You just search Read With Anna, one word, on Etsy, or I always link it in the description box below the video if you're interested. And we're moving into March already. Woohoo! Gospel of Luke. We're reading through the New Testament this year. So Read With Anna Bible Reading Plan. <clears throat> Really, this is just to kind of show you guys my notes. This is our anchor scripture for the whole Bible reading plan. Make me walk along the path of your commands, for that is where my happiness is found. It's in Psalm 119, verse 35. And from this verse, I have pulled three themes, clusters of words, um, to help us study the New Testament based on this verse. Um, it's just an interesting way to read, so I'll just kind of show you guys that. I am going to be releasing um, bookmarks on my Etsy shop that are gonna have this so that you can, cause I used to do this thing where I just used like this sticky note and it was very, it wasn't big enough to like put everything on it. So there will be a bookmark coming probably hopefully in the next two weeks or so. But just going through highlighting, you guys can pause the video whenever you wanna look at anything more in depth. So a lot of times when I'm reading the Bible, um, I'll read a scripture and I am asking the Holy Spirit, Lord, remind me of other scriptures that tie into what we're reading and link, like for example, linking Matthew into Mark. Well, Matthew 28, 19 through 20, there's a lot about baptism and the Great Commission, et cetera, et cetera, obeying all the commands that Jesus has given us. And so I'm linking in what we're talking about in Mark to this, because there is connections throughout the Bible. There are connections throughout the Bible. And it's really neat to find those and gain understanding. So you may recognize some of these notes because this was the first devotional. These are the notes that I used to film the first devotional video um, in February for the Gospel of Mark. These are some orange notes because they were, I used these for a video too over on Patreon. And I'm not sure that I wanted them to be permanently in my Bible because they were more just to help me get through the video. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what that is about. If you want to understand why, like <laughs> what? Climate change activists, how does that have to do with the Bible? Well, you can, that devotional is, it's over on Patreon. And so <laughs> my Patreon page is linked below too. Trying to just not make this video too long, but give you guys a chance to let the camera focus in on what's written. So here I was noticing how many times there was these, the word new Jesus was the one thing I wish this Bible had, this is a new living translation Bible and I will link it on Amazon below cause it's still on sale for $26.99 last I checked and I got it for $39.99 and it has these great wide margins you can see for taking notes or you know, whatever. Um, but, um, I was going to say, I wish there were red lettering, but there's not for the words of Jesus. So anyway, I was noticing there was a lot about a new way and the Holy Spirit reminded me of that scripture in Revelation 21, except I didn't know it was in Revelation 21. I just knew the phrase, um, behold, I am making all things new. And I knew that was a quote from Jesus and I thought it might be in Revelation, but um, I Googled it. It sure enough was, and I found the passage and read it in context, and I found so many connections between Mark chapter 2 and Revelation 21 verses 1 through 6 that I ended up writing it here in the margin and highlighting the connections. Because, you, yeah, you can just write the reference, but if you write the passage in, plus I wanted to use it in the New American Standard Bible instead of New Living Translation, um, those are the two translations I am most into reading this year, New American Standard Bible and New Living Translation. But when you do that, you can, like, connect 
how everything fits together. So, moving right along. I don't have notes for every single chapter. I'm not going to just write something to write something. I've addressed that before. It's if the Lord is teaching me like a new fresh lesson or something that I want to remember. And someday probably my daughter will have this Bible, one of my daughters. And they can look at it if they want. I look at my grandpa and grandma's old Bibles. My mom's still using her Bibles and my dad is still using his Bible. He probably uses his phone, honestly, my dad. But more, There's more understanding with close following. So I wrote down another passage there. Following Jesus closely, what that consists of, listening, obeying, doing that consistently. Sometimes I just run out of space over here and it... <laughs> yeah. Hopefully this is interesting for you all. Some of you love this, I know, because you tell me. Others are like, uh, oh, pass. <laughs> I saw so many connections in Proverbs while I was reading in the Gospel of Mark. Proverbs 4 especially. And, I, and these are more like notes like, I felt like the Lord reminded me of Proverbs 4 or a different passage, whatever. This I don't think this one specifically is Proverbs 4. But then, like, he reminded me of the passages, and because I'm so familiar with, obviously, Psalm 1, 1935 and Colossians 2, 6, and 7, if you've watched my channel, you know Colossians 2, 1 through 10 is my mission scripture for what I do here on YouTube and Patreon. And so, uh, sometimes I don't write out the whole scripture, but I can look at those scriptures and instantly know. Okay, and then there's something that the Lord has shown me here, like, when you truly believe, you demonstrate your belief or faith with action, which is obedience and following Jesus with your life. So, and then I was just like having these thoughts that sometimes people follow because they believe, sometimes people believe because or after they begin to follow, and that was in the context of Jesus calling his disciples to follow him and how their faith grew and grew and grew. Continuing to follow must always be the day-to-day -day way of life if someone wants to stay on God's path, because that's something Christians deal with, is they drift away or you know, they're, they're less, um, committed or, you know, so anyway, let's just kind of, yep. All right. So here you'll notice I have, um, sometimes I'll number and highlight the number and then I'll write the number over here so that it makes sense how it connects. Obedient, obeying God is a lifestyle of discipline, not a one-time occurrence. It's not just accepting Christ Jesus as Lord, but it's continuing to follow him after you've accepted him as Lord, which is what Colossians 2, 6 tells us. And then the thing I like about reading the New Testament over and over and over is you do notice the differences in how the different authors of the Gospels and New Testament phrase the same concept, but they phrase it a little differently because Matthew was written primarily to a Jewish audience. You know, Luke was written to a Gentile Christian audience. Like, there's just so many interesting things about reading the Bible repetitively. I'm trying to get this to focus for you all. And some of these notes I have not made videos on because I am currently almost 36 weeks pregnant when you're watching this. And I just... And, and I do make longer videos anyway, so if I make the longer videos, if my talking is bothering you, just mute it, turn on some music, and look at the notes. <laughs> but um, because I'm so far along pregnant, I, I have the energy to, for sure to do two videos a week. One on Patreon, one on YouTube, and then this is a third video for this week, actually. But I, I haven't had time to turn all of these notes into... A video. This stuff for sure has not been turned into a video. And I know I write this scripture out probably like every fourth, you know, the anchor scripture, Psalm 119, verse 35. I write this out probably every fourth page in my Bible, but it's because I want to directly connect a phrase in that scripture to something that is directly said here in the New Testament. People want to discount the Old Testament, act like it's not as important to be reading. It is.
ups and downs, highs and lows, nature of life, nature of closely following Jesus. I know that people, especially like I was in youth ministry for a long time, teenagers are like, I just want to have that spiritual high I had at youth camp or on the mission trip for every day. I want to be passionate about God every day. That is going to be exhausting. Life is not going to be passionate every single day. Marriage will not be passionate every single day. Th th that's not the nature of life in general. Life in general, there are ups, there are downs, there is the mundane, and there's something special and important about each of those different types of experiences in life or seasons in life. And you just keep trucking, even if it is mundane, even if it is putting your child, like for me, I'm in the two-year-old phase of life with my daughter and we have a night routine that takes about an hour every night to get her a bath and brush our teeth, read stories, mommy and daddy spend time with you, the lights are low, we get in bed, you know, we, we make sure your blankets are on and your sound makers on, then you fall asleep. It, it's mundane, but it's precious. And it's really, really, is it as boring as I could perceive it to be. And sometimes there are times where like, I'm just ready for her to fall asleep so I can go do my own thing. As boring as that can be, it, these are very, very special moments. And they're also adding value to her because she's gaining discipline in life that's going to help her be a successful adult, like being disciplined to go to bed at the same time every night or go to bed early enough to sleep well throughout the night. That's a ramble. <laughs> Almost there. There's only 16 chapters in Mark, guys, and I don't have notes on every page at the end here, so. I thought this whole, like Matthew 12, 13, 14, authority was a really, because we're talking about leadership is one, make me walk along the path of your commands. When you're asking God to make you do something, well, you're submitting to his authority. You're giving him your free will. And because you are giving him your free will, um, he, he, the, you're finding your delight, your pleasure, your happiness, your desire, your deepest desire in life is being found because you are giving your free will back to God. And when you do that, it's the best possible way of life. Okay, so here, see, it says number three right here. Let me get it to focus. That is all the way from the page before where I was talking about Jesus in the temple. And I went one, two, three, four. I noticed that it showed him, you know, when Jesus, like, we think about him going and driving out the money changers and things. Well, did you know he went to the temple four times in, like, two two days? And so I noticed that for the first time ever, and I was like, first he observed, I did not make a video on this, Jesus looked around the first time, here in, and I wrote down which verses, verse 11, 11, Jesus looks around carefully, he observes what's happening in the temple, and then leaves. The next day, he comes back and takes action, based on what he observed the day before, and quotes scripture to explain this action. And then he leaves. Jesus returns to the temple. He's not afraid. There's no regret. He's bold. And he responds to the challenges and tests thrown at him and teaches based on that. So that's when Jesus is being challenged by these religious leaders. Then Jesus sits down across from the temple on the Mount of Olives, which sounds so beautiful and picturesque, with his disciples and explains what's coming next. I just thought that was so interesting. And it, it extends for several chapters. So I just went ahead and marked it. This is still part of that third um, time in the temple. And then fourth, later, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives across the valley from the temple. And he's telling them basically what Paul, the apostle, confirms in Colossians 2, 1 through 10, which is, you know, my mission scripture. So I really enjoyed reading this part of Mark. Just reflecting on how God is the ultimate perfect and only incorruptible authority. Human authorities aren't ultimate, but they are submitted under God's authority. They are imperfect. They can be corrupted. And then Colossians 2.10 talks about, So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. So when you're trying to decide, hey, should I obey this governmental leader or this teacher or this um, employer or, you know, whatever authority figures in your life, you, you, you obey them until they are violating God's commands. And that's when you obey God over them because their authority has to be submitted to God's authority in your life. So I have lots of interesting content from this Bible reading plan that I haven't turned into videos. Someday I've said this so many times, I would love to write a book 
because I think these videos, there would be just hours, I think people would get tired of watching hours of videos based on all this stuff, you know? So, sometimes I'll write a question. See, there's question marks there. If I'm not sure, corrupt human authority yet used for God's purpose, if I don't quite understand that, I'll write a note. My pastor, I love my pastor, he's, he, I think we have a similar personality approach to studying the Bible and sometimes like because I've written a question mark there when he 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 works systematically through books of the Bible as well he went through Mark two years ago um, and and sometimes and I wasn't there for part of that because I was living in Illinois at the time but um, we're back in Tennessee anyhow I didn't hear him address that but sometimes those question mark things that are right in the margins my pastor he will address them and then I'll be able to take notes and I'll be like finally I understand it a little bit better. This was interesting too, when you're talking about leadership and following and influence, Jesus promoted his disciples to his apostles by sending them out with delegated authority. They decided to closely follow him. That was the first step early on in Mark. Then they spent time closely following him. And then he sent them out as leaders under him and they continue to follow him and lead others to do the same throughout the New Testament. And you see that kind of starting in Mark 6, moving on. So anyway, this is the beginning of Luke. Obviously, I am deep into Luke. We've already had two videos on Luke this week between YouTube and Patreon. Um, and I've got more coming your way. As you can see, I'll give you a sneak preview. Woo! Luke has been really, I have been loving reading Luke. Like, loving it, loving it, loving it, loving it. So, anyway, that's the video for you all. Thank you so much for watching. And I will talk to you guys later. Okay, bye.